All right, everybody, today I'm gonna to be showing you how to completely disassemble every component that you might ever need to remove from the Alienware X51. So the right side cover is the easiest part. There was a screw here. It locks this into place. I took it out and cover comes right off. Lighting cable is right here. Boom, easy. Now the optical drive I've already removed. I haven't been using it. If you want to see a video on how to do that, click on the picture in picture and the link will take you right there. Next step is we're going to remove the video card cage. This is a very interesting design. They went for shortening the overall width and maintaining a comfortable length profile. So they made the video card be able to be sideways adaptable to the motherboard using this case component. It'll lift right out. Disconnect the power on this side and we have our very beautiful GTX 660. This uh, hinge here locks it into place. Just uh, try to work on a hardwood floor or somewhere away from a carpet so to protect your components from static discharge. If you have to wiggle a little bit, that's not the end of the world. Beautiful. All right, next I'm going to remove the hard drive. Ouch. Got it. All right, next, I'm going to remove the CPU fan and heat sink. Two screws over here, extremely easy. Shroud lifts right out. There are four screws containing the fan and heat sink. Disconnect or connect to the motherboard. Boom, CPU fan and heat sink. All right, next we're going to do the hardest thing you will ever have to do computer related and that's remove the RAM. It's extremely difficult. Exercise caution when doing this. Unclip it. From the top, two sticks of Corsair Vengeance. It was extremely difficult. I don't know how I managed to pull that off. All right, next we're going to remove the wireless card. This is the wireless card. A lot of people say they had problems with it. I personally haven't. It's wired on by these. Uh, I don't know how you, I don't know how to describe them, but there are two of these things. They look like antenna from an insect or something. All right, next we're taking out the processor itself. Lever holding it in place, push down, 
and out. Release. There it is. Handle it by the sides. Be sure not to touch the bottom. And you can see the thermal paste is already pre-applied. Next, I'm going to go ahead and remove the motherboard. I'm going to disconnect any possible cables, SATA, case lighting, power, otherwise. This is the front fan cable. It's one I know of. And this. This is the 20 pin. That's one I'm definitely sure of. Oh, okay. Okay. Interesting, there are two 20 pins. So, I don't know where the power supply feeds into. Interesting. This feeds into this board which then feeds the 20 pin power to this motherboard. Ah, oh, interesting. Okay, there should be another switch at this corner. This, let me see what this goes to. This is a, I think this is a front USB. This might be a front USB. HD audio or something. Okay. And then the SATAs. SATAs and this one is a oh this one's already off. Oh this was oh this was the mini fan case. Okay, this one is a how oh, could it be? This could be the this could be a power switch. Again, four screws on opposite sides of the motherboard. Okay, here's the motherboard. Looks like a mini ATX, but it's not your standard mini ATX. Um, got two slots for RAM, PCIe, but you're not gonna be able to do everything with just this motherboard. I think the, um, so you got two other motherboard panels for lighting and power and whatnot. Uh, from your power supply, you could feed your 20 pin over here, but that's not how the Alienware X51 power supply works. The um, regular power adapter goes into this board, which feeds its power into this 20 pin, which then feeds its power over into this 20 pin. So that's just one example of many. I think the main power switch is also on the other boards. Um, yeah, and you've got. Uh, yeah, you got SATA going off of like, you know, other boards into this board and stuff. So to move this computer into another one uh, would take a lot of modding and a lot of effort to get these motherboards to be compatible with another PC. All right, I'm gonna move the left panel now. Left panel is uh, more difficult than the right one, but there is a lighting cable connected to this front motherboard here. The screw locking the left side cover in place is this one here, located next to the second motherboard.
Remember the lighting cable we disconnected from earlier? Can feed that off the um, electrical tape that's uh, gluing into the side of the case. We feed it through the front opening lip. Now have a free left cover. Okay. Um, the last part that could possibly be relevant is removing the uh, interior case fan. Now I gotta take off the front bezel. Oh, wow, um, yeah, I got a the power, power switch, yes, and the LED lighting cable, I'll take that out. Yeah, so there's a lot of lighting on the front motherboard, but there's probably some crucial function to the computer other than just lighting with the front motherboard. So I don't think it's a very practical idea to try and um, get the motherboard into another system. We have a free front bezel. Okay. Ah, yes, uh, there is something to squeeze at the bottom. This clip. Squeeze the two sides and it comes off. Remove the screw. Now we have an exposed front case fan. There are four screws at the corners. If you want to remove the grill, it's easy just to take off these plastic nubs with your hand. 